The Numerian Crusaders are now under the complete domination and enslavement of the High Dominion of Sindar, with the exception of one rebel offshoot we've yet to deal with properly. But with two entire nations recently conquered, our soon-to-be new executor is going to have his or her hands completely full. It's, it's going to be a lot. We have a lot to do. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Galactic Paragons in our High Dominion 2 series, where um, I'm going to do a couple of things while we're on pause here. We have a science ship that is serving... Surveying Nimaroth. I sent them to explore, but not survey. All right, fair enough. So they've been sitting there for God knows how long, but we're going to survey Nimaroth, and then we also need to survey Ariga once we clear those guardians. But before I take a look at that, I want to go ahead and change our diplomatic stance. This occurred to me right after the end of the last episode where it's like, okay, we control all this territory now. Expansionism as our diplomatic stance is giving us a double border friction penalty. So for all of the borders that we share with other empires, it creates a double opinion penalty. However, if we go with belligerent instead, we're not going to be isolationist because that actually triples border friction and we're not cooperative because story. Belligerent, however, we do get an improved relations penalty if we're trying to improve relations, which we are because we, we don't want to go to war with the coalition of, of Jarel War. That's going to impose a penalty in terms of influence, but not a lot. However, we no longer have the border friction penalty. War exhaustion will accrue more slowly. Naval capacity will be increased. And claims will also cost less, which I honestly wish I would have seen a little bit sooner. But let's go ahead and select that, because that's going to make it a little bit more likely that, like, maybe these guys won't want to mess with us as much. You know? So, they're hostile to us at the moment. I don't... I'm, I'm a little thrown by the fact that they're hostile. Didn't we just fight a war together? It's surprising. Maybe they're just pissed that we took all that territory. But, um, all right, so we have a lot to do. A lot of just economic balancing and random stuff. So, tell you what, let's also have the... Where are my armies? Let's have them come up and join with the fleets. There this goes. All right, we do have an election in progress, as I mentioned. And Nock, son of Gitu, is currently the executor. I don't have enough unity to intervene, unfortunately. So we'll just have to see how this goes. Technology oh. secured. Here we go. War preparations. The coalition of Jarel War are preparing to declare war on us, but due to lack of intel, it is unclear when it will happen. What are you thinking? They're economically pathetic compared to us. Their technology level is inferior. Their fleet power is inferior. So it's like, we would stomp you. Are you thinking you might... Maybe they're thinking they would drag in the Republic of Hydor with... Wait, would they? They're rivals with the Covenant of Cart. Which is good. Because they're less likely to... Like, we have... Okay, yeah. If they're thinking about declaring war... Let me try something. This isn't because I want to be nice to them. It's not. But... Hang on, what if we sent you minor artifacts? We sent you 500 minor artifacts. That wouldn't take away from any of the resources that we're using at the moment. But if we sent you those... Maybe that'll help you like me a little bit more and make you less likely to declare on me. Not because I don't want to fight you, but because I just have so many other things on my plate at the moment. Orbital ring. All right, that's done. Elgate insight. Ooh, construction templates is nice. Planetary builds B plus 50%. Empire size from districts minus 10%. That is very welcome. Also, Elgate insight. I'm going to go for construction templates, though, because we have such a big empire. It makes a lot of sense to just, like, gun for that. All right. If they're going to try to declare on me, then I want to at least try and get my fleet 
in position. Now, interestingly, I'm more vulnerable to them from over here. I mean, they could come through here, but I would rather have my fleets here defending. So let's do that. And let's see what they do. A enemy has declared war on us. Okay, pet peeve. Did you notice how this pop-up for a pre-FTL alien civilization popped up at the exact same time as the as the declaration of war? This has happened in every Stellaris series that I've done since I came back, but also it just tends to happen a lot in Stellaris in general. Total pet peeve, but I really wish they would fix it to where this doesn't happen. Because it's one thing, it's frustrating enough when like there's a lot happening at once and you're having to deal with pop-up after pop-up. And part of that is just being a content creator and the fact that you're narrating on top of playing. But when literally you have a declaration of war pop-up at the same instant, when the ticks overlap and they happen at the same time and you get a pop-up for something completely benign and like not as nearly as important as a declaration of war, it looks like it's just them, said Wargle. It's not just them. It's also the Republic of Hydor. Damn it. All right. Well, they're overwhelming compared to us. Yeah, we're absolutely going to vassalize you. You're done. <laughs> I'll fight as hard as I have to just to take all of your territory. Wow. Okay. All right, let's... Uh, I'm going to get my army over to Pakshalika. Or just TA. All right, so we're going to upgrade those fleets. Now, what I really don't want to happen here, right now we have Nock as our executor. I have Baron Victor as our Minister of Defense. And I need him on the front lines. I mean, I still get some benefits... For him, you know, from having him like in, you know, in office. So it's not like if he gets elected, it would bug me. But this is something I was thinking about in the last episode when his name was on the list. And I think when his name was on the list in the previous episode, it's like, hold on a second. We're xenophobic, right? This is, uh, it, to be fair, this expansion did just come out. Galactic Paragons is new. And so they're still working out like, how do we deal with these new leaders that are Zenos that we're trying to incorporate into the narrative of every Stellaris game and they can randomly appear and Baron Victor's one of them like how do we incorporate that and they're trying to balance that but like it doesn't make sense that less than 100 years into the game like a non this is a xenophobic empire I don't mind the idea of like as a player I don't mind the idea of him being the leader at all but it doesn't fit the narrative in my mind So, I'm kind of just mentally preparing a little bit, given everything that's already happening, for the fact that Baron Victor might get elected. We do have an extra leader capacity slot, so we might be able to deal with it, but let's see how this goes. The election should happen any moment now. Special project complete. The other ends have been secured. Remember, we're collecting these specimens now. All right, so the war is underway. We just need to get our fleets in position. Pause. Also, hang on. Ooh. Yeah, let's go ahead and deactivate recycling campaign. That's not necessary. And I have volatile land clearance set up right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's turn that off and turn on volatile ammunition. Crystal and sensors. I want focusing crystals, but I don't have the income to support it. And, oh yeah, exotic gases for shield boost. Let's do it. Just to make my ships a little stronger. So, once again, we're at war with literally everyone. And with my luck, the, the Mephishiotans will declare war on me too. Spaceborne life form encountered. Star system charted. Okay, nice. Nock, son of Gitu, was re-elected. So he is... A defense engineer, so our defense platforms do more damage and have more hull points. We haven't had the ability to build any defense platforms. 
but you know that's good at least technology secure i was very nervous about baron victor getting elected that would have that bit would have been a little strange all right so why don't we i don't need more naval cap right now i'm going to go ahead and select galactic bureaucracy seems like a good call Where do I have shipyards nearby? No, I didn't actually want to go there. Alright, tell you what. I've got you coming to Theravia for upgrades. Go to the Sin system. Because... Star system charted. I want to have them in that general direction if we need to send, like, if we need to split our fleets. I don't want to. I'd rather hit these guys really hard and then just, like, annihilate them, come back down and hit, you know, these guys. But it's probably not going to happen that way, would be my guess. Probably not going to happen that way. Let's build a hyper relay. Well, no, let's not build a hyper relay. Let's just get a bunch of our ships out of harm's way. Okay. Oh boy. Stellaris has a way of just throwing one thing after another after another at you. Like, and I even went to, like, the war just ended towards the end of the last episode, I feel like. I, I don't feel like I let a lot of time pass. I am feeling like I wish I would have set up that policy a little bit sooner. Also, did I send all of those minor artifacts? No, the deal didn't go through. The deal didn't go through, so at least there's that. All right, so my fleet's moving together. All right, I want you to go ahead and build a starbase in Nimaroth. And then we're gonna bring you down here. I wanna kind of back my various civilian ships off. And then we can investigate this archaeological site there. Didn't I already give an order for one of the construction ships to come down to Bruin Singularity? I feel like I did. Maybe I didn't. But I don't want to spend a ton of alloys or influence right now. We just need to... I want to try and put a dent in these guys because apparently... Yeah, they're inferior. Their technology level is inferior. Their, econo their <laughs> economic power is pathetic relative to ours. These guys, however, I'm just hoping that we have a situation where, kind of similar to what happened with this war for a while, like when this first happened, like they didn't send a fleet right away. New negative trait. Wait. Tig, daughter of Utra. So she's paranoid. She's going to slow down our research speed as a result of that. Well, that's inconvenient. I really don't need you doing that, Tig, daughter of Utra. I like the fact that there's someone improving ship upkeep and army upkeep, but at the end of the day, like, I kind of want to replace them with someone that's not going to do that. Ooh. Monthly Alois here. This would improve ship weapons damage and sublight speed. This would improve ship weapons damage and army damage. And provide monthly food. Ooh, tips on a fori. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and replace our grand storyteller there so we don't have that negative affecting our research. All right, I'm here to serve your empire. Tell me what needs to be done. Thank you for that. All right, so now we're at 10 of 10. And we have a leader that... Yeah, so right now you're not able to do anything. Hang on. Do I have anyone else, though? Yeah, that other leader is in charge of... Okay, that makes sense. That other leader is in charge of a science ship. Where is the army? All right, so we already have Tabu, son of Jark. 
who's in charge of this army. And what I would really like to do, I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and select the Sin Station. I don't quite have what I need to upgrade that at the moment, but I would like to build... We haven't built any Cyrex Warforms yet, and I feel like it's time. Alright, so that's five Cyrex Warforms. They're going to take a long time to build, though. Alright, so... Let me think here. What if... Yeah, the tier system. I need to take a look here. Yeah, this is honestly a better place to train troops. So, let's take the Wayfrid Station. The Army Builder. And we're going to build assault armies. Okay, so that's a really expensive assault army. But we do have, like, economically, we're in pretty good shape at the moment. So that's nice. I mentioned in the last episode that one thing I wanted to do was take a look at worlds that might have, like, government measures in place still. But yeah, like, for example, we, we probably don't need martial law here on Wayfred 2 anymore. Like, we're probably fine. If, if it's reducing... Like, stability seems to be much better now. Also, we do have some crime here on Wegri, so we're going to maintain it there. Yeah, stability is better on Schlarg. If it's reducing, you know, resources from jobs, like, I need to go ahead and stop some of these penalties that I have in place, where it makes sense to do so. Let's go ahead and end martial law there. These are planets that once belonged to the Yuri that are no longer really problematic for me. Yeah, but planets like this, it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna remove it yet. Doesn't make sense. And we've got a lot of planets that can be placed into sectors as well. Okay. Um Construction. We've got the second star order moving over to Shashamar. And New contact. We have received communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire that called themselves the Saran Stellar Industries. They claim to have learned of our existence by listening in on the communications of another empire we're in, in contact with. They're ruthless capitalists. We will achieve unity. Do not stand in our way. Where are you? Oh, wow. You're over there and you're big. All right. So, currently spying on them. Am I spying on you guys? Yes. Spying on them. Spying on them. They're trivial. It's tempting to gather information on them. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and start spying on them then. We have a free envoy. Let's go ahead and use it. Okay, now, there's a lot else that I can do, actually, at the moment. And it seems like it would behoove me to go ahead and get that going. I'm going to build some new industrial districts. Serpta. You have some crime issues. I'm not going to do anything that upgrades moats at the moment. That's a bad idea. Hang on. What if I... Instead of doing an industrial district, what if I built another ancient refinery? What if on Schlarg I built another... Oh, I guess the vault doesn't need to be built on multiple planets. It can only be built on the capital, or on capitals of, of sectors, perhaps. We'll find out. Let's do an ancient refinery. Alright, so the second star order, we just need to get an, <laughs> we need them to get to Shashamar. Alright, the Sauron Stellar Industries have closed their borders to us. Shocking development there. 
Star system charted. Hidden resources. Nice. So we're already getting some decent, you know, payoff. Construction complete. from selecting that new civic. All right, build those mining stations, please. All right, so far, no attack force that I've seen or that I've been notified of. Doesn't mean there isn't one. Do I have battleships yet? I can't recall if I've actually unlocked battleships. There was a, there, there's been a lot going on. Yeah, no, we just have cruisers. Okay, needed to be sure. Any other upgrades that I can do? Nope, those fleets are both at full strength. That's good. Just trying to get them moving as fast as possible. Good, the army's caught up. It's good to see. Construction complete. Economically, we're surprisingly good at the moment. I don't like that I have an idle leader, though. An army leader. Now... I can actually give them something to do, truth be told. I can. So we have this fleet here. So I can give them to Tib, son of Fori, who's the grand storyteller. We're just waiting for that army to finish training up. Star system charted. So if I give you the order to upgrade. No, you're still going to try and go back to Thoravia. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Go to the Sin Station. <laughs> Substance abuse increases on Serpta. Troubling news. Alright, so, yeah, we're still seeing issues there, which is not hugely surprising. Yeah, I, there's nothing else I want to do here that would really help. I mean, I could... Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and upgrade the Hall of Judgment. That's going to eliminate our volatile moat income temporarily. Construction complete. until we can increase it otherwise. All right, Tirgosh. Speaking of increasing it otherwise, let's see if there's actually something we can do. I'm going to build alloy foundries here. I think that's the most pressing need that we have at the moment. Technology secured. Edicts fund plus 20, good. Base intel level plus 10. And we have the networked dominance edict, as well as the administrative complex building. I'm going to go ahead and select effective bureaucracy because an additional edicts fund boost right now would come in handy. Right now, we are under our edicts fund, which is nice. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can do. We have information quarantine, which we're using at the moment to increase stability and governing ethics attraction, which we need to continue to use, but we don't have to use it indefinitely. All right. I could turn off Fortify the Border and replace Fleet Supremacy, but that would take a chunk out of ship upkeep, and I don't want to do that. Oh boy. All right. Why are you doing that? It doesn't make any sense. Like, you should upgrade at the Sin Station. You're well within Enemy range of that station. Exposed. Okay, where? All right, so it does look like we have an enemy fleet. We've detected both of them. So it's the Republic of Hydor moving in on my territory, which is not surprising. Um, and we also have a relatively large fleet here. Not as strong as my fleet, though. So I'm hoping that I can do, like, catastrophic Enemy damage. Exposed. All right, wow, lots of fleets. I'm just going to have to take some hits, I think, on one side here. Which does not make me happy to think about. Yeah, let's go ahead and build... You need more housing, and we also need just another industrial district in general. So go ahead and do that, please. The birth of the Galactic Community. Several spacefaring empires, some of them unknown to us, have banded together to form a Galactic Community. Yes, let us join it. You never know what you never know what kind of help we might be able to find at this point. Show us your wares. 
not that we would seek help, but like if there's a way that we could manipulate circumstances to our advantage. Bunk beds, not interested. Move along. Construction. I have bigger concerns than bunk beds at the moment. All right, so the Seth Jaren Alliance and the Zaplo Technocracy. All righty. All right, we did go ahead and build in Bruin Singularity, so I had given that order. Let's go ahead and give the order to build in Kabji. Holy crap. What's this? All right, so yeah, they're, they're jumping in. They have... Wow. These guys have several massive fleets. What I'm going to have to do to win this war... I'm gonna have to just annihilate their allies and then hope that I can put up enough of a defense. Man, they, the Helven Hegemony has joined the Galactic community, nice. All right, so yeah, they're sending in their fleets. I get it. I, I appreciate the repeated warnings game, but you're pulling focus away from where I actually want my ships. All right, so it looks like this fleet is on its way. We have Baron Victor's fleet on course to intercept. Special project complete. Our black secured, nice. So we're getting society research for that. New Reordan, yep. Alloy Foundry, obvious opportunity. And let's go ahead and build Alloy Foundries there too. It is crazy how you can have like a good run for a couple of episodes and then the game will just find a way to say, oh, by the way, Spaceport you're not as safe that. as you think. <laughs> Love it. All right, it looks like they might try to attack Shashamar. All right, so are you in the Sin system yet? If I gave you the order to upgrade, would you go to the Sin station? Yes, you would. Thank you. That's what I wanted you to do this whole freaking time. Now, I could go ahead and start building another fleet to defend. At this point, I don't know that there's much reason to do so. Like, I, I'm, I'm just kind of going to get stomped down here. I could build up some platforms, I guess, with what I, with like, what few alloys I have. which I haven't even had those alloys until this episode. All right, so what are you doing? That's my question. Technology are you just going to hang out in the center? That's fair. All right, edict fund increase. Diplomatic weight plus 10%. Probably the best choice. Let's go ahead and go with that. What a plot twist. Spaceport under attack. Yeah, I know. There's nothing I can do down there. Game. There's there's literally nothing I can do. Okay. Uh, you know what? I don't have time to wait. Although, part of me does want to go ahead and get these upgrades done and then attack. Complete. So it's like, what do I do? Like, if I have my fleets together, Spaceport under attack. Vessel then I can definitely attack right now. Demise. Declare rivalry from the co really. Now you're now you're going to declare us a rival. I mean, we're at war, so I guess I guess that's apt. Wow, wow. That's all I can say. It's just wow. Spaceport under attack. Yeah, we're going to get we're going to get just finished. annihilated down here. Also, we need to get this army out of dodge quickly. Good. They got out. And they're moving through Special project what complete. little hyperlay network we have, or rather hyper relay network. Is there anything more we can do on Serpta? There's really not. There are job opportunities, but thankfully those jobs will relocate as necessary. I just really wish this fleet would hurry the heck up. <laughs> My god. Alright, so they're... 
I've never seen that before. Look at that. This fleet has four stars. Not three, four. That's how powerful they are. So the Wayford Station is not prepared, basically. Thankfully, we did manage to build some defenses. And I'll queue up a few more just, you know, to give them what for. <laughs> but there's not a lot that I can do. All right, so I'm going to build alloy foundries there. Oh, wait a minute. It's not really alloy foundries that we need, though. There's overcrowding on this planet. There's housing. So why don't you build an industrial district? That's going to provide housing and jobs that will produce things that I need. All right, can you get these upgrades done, please? Spaceport under attack. This fleet has been waiting for an upgrade for the longest time. All right, so we have construction templates done. Resource silos capacity has increased. Planetary build speed dramatically increased. And empire size from districts has been... The penalty has been reduced by 10%. Battleship. Yeah, absolutely. Let's research Battleship because I feel like we need that at this point. Man, this entire game has been against me. Production capacity and I want to take a moment. Diminished. I want to take a moment to remind you before I end this episode... Let me remind you of something that I said in the first episode, which is that, you know, even if you set up a game with zero alien empires, other empires will pop up from pre-FTLs that are close to space travel stage near the beginning of the game, and it really won't seem like you're in an empty galaxy. Now, we set, what did we set, five, six, or seven? It was a kind of a low number, and I was like, this might seem low, but trust me, there'll be plenty of chaos. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> like there's been nothing but fighting for this entire series and the beautiful thing about it compared to clandestine curiosity is i'm able to fight back but jesus like these guys just turned right around and said okay we're gonna fight you now and i was not expecting them to go that hard i was also kind of honestly i was expecting to have a little bit more clout i was expecting to be a little bit scarier to them but they just seized the opportunity system hard point lost all right, so I'm guessing secured. I'm guessing that was the Wayford Station falling. Oh no, that's the wasted Wayford Station in the process of falling. All right, so we have more diplomatic weight. Yeah, global defense grid. Let's go ahead and increase defense army health. Tradition unlock leader maximum negative traits. Ooh, that could come in handy. Yeah, let's go ahead and say psychological profiling. I don't want negative traits. Let's go ahead and get that going. It does look like their fleet jumped out of the Vigimar system, so we're going to take the opportunity to follow them. Solar system hard point lost. All right, so the Wayfred station has fallen. There's nothing we can do against these guys down here. We just have to focus our efforts on, on attacking up here. Spaceport under attack. We just have to... Vessels upgraded. Except they're invading, really. It's just so, like... Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. All right, so these upgrades are done. I'm going to give the order now. We've taken control of Vigimar, and... Um, yeah, our army is already landing on their planet. Ground invasion force right. has seized a planet. So there's that. Then it's now in session, which is hilarious. Form the galactic market. Sure, let's vote in favor of that. It just seems like such a trivial concern at the moment, but Alright, so let's go ahead and attack where we can I'm going to bring my fleet in and again, my goal here is I'm going to just try and take as much of this territory up here as I can so that one side of the war is eliminated and meanwhile they're going to be taking tons of territory down here and there's not going to be a lot that I can do about it. Hang on, let me set this this army uh, to aggressive as well, and I'll bring them to Vigimar. And I'm just hoping that I can do enough damage fast enough up here to this inferior enemy that I can end the war quickly, because they're the ones that declared it. That's my only chance. All right, so advanced combat rolls is kind of the way to go, I think. Let's go ahead and research that. Anthrus mandates. 
Yeah, let's do another industrial world. I don't want to do a lot of building. All right, Serpta is still unstable. We need martial law, but it's getting better. This is a continental world. That's part of the reason there are stability issues. So if we terraform you to an alpine world, which I can do with just a little bit more. Yep. Let's go ahead and start that process. Because the sooner that world is the correct type, the better. But um, we're 35 minutes in. I'm going to stop this episode here. <laughs> And in the next episode, I'm just, I'm going to do, like I said, as much damage as fast as I can with both of my fleets to this empire up here, because I don't think the coalition of Jarell War stands a chance against me. And if I can completely take, you know, it looks like their capital is up here. So if I can beeline to Jarell War and take this up here, then I might be able to kind of turn around and at least mount a defense down here. Now, one thing I may be able to do here is go ahead and get some stations upgrading in this general area. So I'm going to do that. Just, I mean, I should have been doing it already, but I was honestly like juggling so many different priorities and I wasn't sure whether or not these guys were going to come right in with fleets, but they clearly are. So, yeah. Yeah. This is intense. It's like camping. Serpta. Anything else that I can build? No, there's stations I can upgrade. The Panasta station is currently disconnected. Yeah, we, we're going to have a number of stations disconnected, to be honest. I can reconnect them this way. But they're not going to remain disconnected, because, I mean, I think they're just going to utterly annihilate these colonies down here, which I... They've just been stabilizing. <laughs> so, uh, whatever happens, this is going to be really ugly. And depending on how they attack the colonies, we might even lose colonies. And the even scarier thought is, because this gets worse, the, Mif the Mephishiotans and these guys, we haven't even, you know, seen anything from them yet. The Briannan Void Riders, which are now on our doorstep. And the Mephishotans, which they don't like us, and they're hostile to us. So, I may as well, you know what? Hang on. Forget the spy network on these guys up here. We're going to try and improve our relationship with the Mephi Mephishotans so that we can at least offset the possibility that, that there's going to be any kind of trouble from them. But... Oh boy, this series has been one war after another after another, and I'm still in shock that these guys moved so fast. I, I'm speechless. I really don't know what to say about it. I'll have to gather my thoughts, and like I said, with the next one, we're just going to do as much as we can up here and see where it goes from there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes are coming out every day at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.